At first, it seemed just like any other day, as uneventful as yesterday, the day before, and all the days since the crash that first put me in this place. Even now, I can't quite figure how Tom made the mistake he did, but it was that that started it. As I walked towards the lodge gates, I remember the feeling I got, a sort of tingling in the spine. You get it sometimes when fate is storing something up for you. And I heard Benny's cheery voice and the feeling passed. Going out, Mr. Fleming? Yeah, going up to town. I'm afraid you've missed the green line. But the truck's leaving any minute. Come inside and wait. Have a nice fire going. Thanks, Benny. A friend of mine's giving a farewell party. He's going back to Canada. Good. Make a nice break for you. There you are, sir. Nice comfy chair by the fire. They're operating on you soon, aren't they, Mr. Pelly? In a couple of weeks. Oh, well, I do wish you luck. You've waited long enough. Eighteen months. That's a long time. Hello. Many here. Yes, okay, fine. Truck will be along in a couple of minutes. Tom's driving. Good. Who's doing the op for you, sir? Dr. Langley. Oh, you'll be all right with him. Yeah, sure I will. You know, Benny, before this happened, I used to wonder what it was like to be blind. I suppose most people do sometime or other. I think you're right, sir. I used to look at folk who were blind and wonder what they thought. What kind of a world they'd cooked up for themselves. That's what you do, Benny. You develop three things. Hearing, touch, and make-believe. The first two are compensations, the last. Well, a sort of retreat. In a way, I guess I'll miss quite a lot when I get my sight back. I sincerely hope you do. Thanks, Bob. There's the truck. <laughs> anyway. You'll certainly be one up on most people, so far as hearing's concerned. Got a passenger for you, Tom. Hey, I've got a passenger for you. Oh, hello, Mr. Perry. Hello. See what I mean? Deaf as opposed. <laughs> You're all right, sir. Yeah, fine. Where to? Kensington. You drop me off at Lindale Gardens. Kensington. Sure, it's on the way.
What are you doing here? The name's Pelly. Don't move. I'm not holding this for my help. Well, it seems as though I busted into the wrong house. Seems you have. I was looking for a guy named Bob Elkin. Oh, yes. Uh, Bob Elkin? I'm afraid he doesn't live here. This is three Lindale Gardens, isn't it? Search him. Having fun? Shut up. Come on, start talking. Where do you come from? Mother said something about the stork. Well, that was just to keep me quiet when the vicar came. Brother, I'll remember your voice. Take a good look at my face, too. It won't do you any good. Can you read? In case of emergency, please note that the bearer of this Christopher Pelly of the wrong hospital for the blind. Blind? That's a break. How did you get in here? I must have uh, come to the wrong address. There's a letter. Have a look, will you? Starts, Dear Chris. That's me. Dear Chris, I'll expect you on the 15th as arranged. Three Lindale Gardens. Look, Otto, we can't risk it. He might go and We've talk. enough trouble on our hands already. I have a better plan. All right, Mickey. He's coming round, Doctor. Do you want to stay, Inspector? Well, I'd like to hear what he's got to say. Well, old fellow, you gave your head a nice wallop. Someone else did. Where am I? Back in your room. How do you feel? Oh, terrible. How did I get here? Well, your friend telephoned the police. After he found you lying in his basement area, they brought you. In whose basement? Well, this friend you went to see. What was the address, Inspector? Number three, Lindale Gardens. Inspector? Police Inspector? That's right. Well, what happened? Did you get them? The man that slugged me. Oh, no, that's all right, sir. You just had a fall, that's all. A nasty fall, mind you. Fall, my... Look, where's that driver? He dropped me at the wrong address. Now, I questioned him. He said that he dropped you outside number three Lindale Gardens. He may think he did, but... All right, if you don't believe I slugged, what are you hanging around for? It's just a matter of routine, that's all, sir. Now, I'd like to ask you a couple of questions, if you don't mind. The driver said that you were standing by the railings outside the house when he left. Right. And they had an opening in them leading to some basement steps. If you think I stumbled through that opening and down those steps... You're all the same, sir. You were found at the bottom a half an hour after the truck had gone. All right. Within that half hour, I went in and out of some house. I don't know where. It certainly wasn't three Lindell guns. Guy doesn't usually throw a party with a knife at his back. Did you say... my friend found me? Mr. Robert Elkin was the name of the gentleman. Well, good that it wasn't him. But I found someone on the floor knifed. The guy comes in and knocks me for six. They must have dumped me to make it look like an accident. Well, it certainly looks like an accident, Pelly. After all, your story is a bit contradictory, sir. Now, if you had some lead on the place you say all this happened in, we might be able to do something about it. I'm afraid there's slight cerebral pressure. Mm -hmm. 
I shall have to operate sooner than I thought. Hey, Doc, wait a minute. I knew I'd forgotten something. Give me my jacket, will you? I found a ring by the body. Maybe you'll believe me when you see that. I don't see much at first, so don't be too disappointed. How does it feel? Not bad. Not bad at all. Well, now you take it easy. Don't touch those blinds and don't try and read anything. Come along, Nurse. That'll be as good as gold. I'll be back in a couple of hours. Boy, am I glad to see you. As I was saying, You spoil me. That's all right, sir. I hope you found the flat as you left it. Yeah, the same old mess. Oh, <laughs> Mr. Belly, you are. Any laundry, sir, is it? it? Yep. Yeah. Oh, well, I'll take it along. Anything for the cleaners? Yeah, there's a suit in the wardrobe. The one the must look as though they've been having the old boy's dinner on. <laughs> this one? No, the one next to it, the natty gray job. Hmm? That's it. Anyone can see you're married. Well, it's best to be on the safe side. I knew a gentleman who lost a five-pound note in the cleaners. Okay. Well, there's nothing in here anyway. Here that is. Well, I never in the lining. Now, I don't suppose you've seen that for years, not since you had your suit cleaned last. Well, I'll be... Then I didn't imagine it. And they thought I was crazy. Mr. Pelly, I'm a married woman. Congratulations. <laughs> And thanks for finding the ring, it makes all the difference. He's off his rocker. Lindale. Lindale Garden. Lindale Square. Have you quite finished? Quite. Yeah, help yourself. Good morning. Is Mr. Uh... Dale? 
Yes, is he in? Well, he's out at the moment, sir, but Miss Dale's in the garden. I'll call her. Thanks. Will you wait in here, sir? What name shall I say? Christopher Pelly. Very good, sir. Enjoying yourself? I was uh, admiring the lion. Really? Thought you were strangling it. What can I do for you, Mr. Uh... Pelly? Chris Pelly. Sorry to bust it in on you like this, but the fact is. Yes? The fact is, I've been in this house before. What are you? A window cleaner? Do you mind telling me something? Does March the 15th mean anything to you? No. Nothing at all? Mr. Pelly, would you be so kind as to tell me what this is all about? On March the 15th, I found a murdered man in this room. That must have been gruesome for you. What did you do with the body? Not a thing. Someone hit me over the head and I woke up in hospital. How did you get out again? Before we go any further, I can see I must make one point clear. One? To start with, Miss Dale, I'm not a lunatic. I never have been, and with any luck, I never shall be. I was a patient waiting to be operated on for blindness. I had a date at number three, Lindell Gardens. I was taken by mistake to three, Lindell Square. If you were still blind, how can you be sure that this was the house you came into? The lion in the hallway gives me the lead, and uh, have you any other pianos in the house? No. I sat on that one, and the body was uh, roughly where you're standing now. Ever seen this before? Where did you find it? Near the body. It belonged to my brother. Is this him? Yes. He was reported killed in a plane crash about a year ago. A year ago? Mr. Pelly, you say this happened on March the 15th? Yeah, it was the evening. I wasn't even in London then. I was in Paris with my father until the 20th. Where were the servants? On holiday. The house was locked up. It was certainly unlocked when I arrived. Dad, this is Mr. Pelly. How do you do? Mr. Pelly's discovered something that makes me think that Norman might have escaped from the plane after all. Who are you? Well, you see, Did I... Did you know my son? No, but I found this ring. Your daughter says it was his. Well, what of it? You might let Mr. Pelly explain from the beginning. If it's anything to do with Norman, I don't wish to hear about it. My son died. You understand? Whatever ideas my daughter has to the contrary, they are not shared by me. If you came here hoping for a reward for some bogus information, you're dealing with the wrong man. Now, kindly leave my house. I'll see Mr. Penny out. I'm sorry about that. You see, my father had a nervous breakdown after Norman was killed. I'd like to talk to you again. How soon can you get away? Ten minutes. Do you know De Broy's restaurant? Yes. I'll meet you there in a quarter of an hour. All right. Uh, two copies, white. involve you in this, but I believe your story, Mr. Pelly. Thanks. Your father doesn't seem to. Oh, well, he's become reconciled to Norman's death. We just don't mention it anymore. I see. Look, I'll hold on to this if you don't mind. There's an inscription. Do you mind reading it? No. To N.D. from L.D. always. Who's L.D.? I've no idea. If Norman cracked up a year ago, what sense does this ring make? possible that he wasn't killed. But I thought you said... I said that he was reported killed. He might have escaped. Maybe you'd better tell me about the crash. Well, it started with engine trouble. Norman told the wireless operator the navigator to bail out, then tried to land on his own. The plane crashed and exploded. His body was never found. 
What makes you think Norman escaped? Well, it may sound like wishful thinking, but you see, we were twins. If one of us had an idea or a thought, the other seemed to, to get it straight away. A sort of affinity? Yes. Then after the crash, I always had the feeling that Norman was still alive. And what sort of feeling have you got now? I mean, if there's anything in this affinity stuff, and the body I found was your brother's, wouldn't you have some feeling about that? I don't know. Have you met the other two members of his crew? One of them, the wireless operator, Chalky. He was a great friend of Norman's. And he's still in the Air Force? No, he was mobbed. Any idea where he is? I think he's with the BEA at Northolt. Well, he'd be worth having a talk to. I ought to get back. Will you do me a favor? What is it? According to your story, there's a murder to be investigated. Maybe Norman, maybe anyone. Until we find out, can we keep it to ourselves? All right. I tell you what, I'll pick you up the corner of your street at 9 o'clock in the morning. We'll go and see Chalky. All right. Goodbye, and thanks for... For what? Just thanks. Hey, Chalky. Hello. Somebody here wants to speak to you. Okay. What can I do for you? Oh, hello, Miss Dale. Hello, Chalky. This is Mr. Pelly. He wants to talk to you about Norman. Better go over here. It's a bit quieter. He was a friend of yours, wasn't he? Best friend I ever had. What happened to the navigator? The one who was with you when you crashed? Guy Sinclair. Well, we're all pals, you see. Guy was pretty cut up, the same as I was. Awful thing was, we saw the whole thing happen. Well, you can imagine, can't you? You're quite safe, and all you can do is watch the fellow who fixed it before you're crashing down to his death. I'm sorry, Miss Dale. Is there something I can do? You don't think there's the remotest chance that Norman may have escaped? Not one in a million. No, the plane was burnt to a frazzle after the petrol tank exploded, and I suppose, well... You suppose he was blown to pieces? Yeah. Did he have any girlfriends? Yes, I think so. You know one with the initials L.D.? L.D.? Oh, yes, there's a little number called Lila Drew. She used to work at the Melody Club. Do you know her? Slightly. I've never heard of her. Where can I find Guy Sinclair? Well, I did have his address somewhere. Let's see if I've still got it. Yes, there it is. It's a place called Paxton Court. Uh, I'd better write down for you. And if you can't find him there, you'll find him at the place he works at. It's a travel agency just off Baker Street. You'll find him there, all right? There you are. You think Paul Norman's still alive? I didn't say so. But I thought you just said that... I asked that there was the slightest chance of him having escaped. It's not quite the same thing, is it? Well, I don't get it. But I suppose you two know what you're doing. I don't know what I can do, but if there is anything, you know where to find me. Nice to see you again, Miss Dale. Thank you, Chalky. Well, thanks a lot. Hey, Chalky! Give us a hand. Well? Chalky seems all right. We'll see if we have any luck with the next customer. Okay, Ben. My two tickets to Buenos Aires, please. Mr. Rawlings, isn't it, sir? That's right. There we are, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. I'd like to have a word with Mr. Guy Sinclair. I'm Sinclair, sir. Haven't we met some place? I don't think so. The Norman Dale's house, wasn't it? I've never been there. I understood you knew him quite well. Did you see him killed? Yes, I was in his air crew. Norman had a girlfriend. Name of Lila Drew, did you know? Norman's girlfriends were none of my business. Do you know her? I don't know what all this has to do with me. I have work to do, if you'll excuse me. Sorry to have bothered you. I just thought you might help. How do you mean? Oh, just help. And give my regards to your two playmates. You see, I never forget a voice. Oh, excuse me, sir. Take over. 
Who do you think's just come into the office? Who? The blind man. He fooled us, all right. What do you mean? He's not blind. Did he know you? Sure he did. He started to ask questions. I told you we should have... Me think. Is Mickey here? Yes. Send him in. Where did you spring from? You opened the door to me, remember? Oh, I thought you were a friend of mine. Time will tell. You mind telling me what you're doing here? I found your address in a Christmas cracker. I dropped by to say hello. Hello? Won't you come and sit down? When did you last see Norman Dale? Norman's dead. That's right. When did you last see him? About a week before the crash. Do me a favor, will you? I was Norman's girlfriend. I prefer to talk about something else. Something alive? Yes. I'm superstitious. Guy Sinclair seems a nice sort of fellow. He's a nasty. No, we know. Why don't you like him? Norman didn't like him either, did he? Norman didn't say. Do you believe he died in that air crash? I should imagine so, unless he was made of asbestos. And he wasn't made of asbestos, Mr. Nosey Parker. Wasn't he? Why don't you just call me Parker? It's more intimate. Remember this? Why did you give it to Norman? About uh, two years ago for his birthday. I found it two months ago, only it wasn't his birthday. Are you a real detective, Parker? No, just an amateur who's crazy about jigsaw puzzles. But in this one, the pieces don't fit. I'd leave it that way if I were you. The picture might not look so pretty when you put the pieces together. Can I get you another drink? Yeah, thanks. Scotch, isn't it? Yeah, without any trimmings. You seem too nice to get yourself mixed up in something you might be awfully sorry about. Being so sorry that makes me so nice. Right now, I'm sorry for Norman Dale. I wouldn't mind a bit of sympathy myself. You don't need any sympathy, Angel. That'll be Johnny. I'll get rid of him, shall I? You must be a thought reader. I am. Is Mr. Pelly here? Well, won't you come in? Oh, this is Miss Dale, Norman's sister. Meet Miss Drew. Won't you join us for a drink? No, thanks. I just wondered how long Mr. Pelly would be. As a matter of fact, I was just coming, Pat. I'm sorry to have bothered you, and thanks for everything. No bother. You must call again when you're not so busy. That's her. I can't think what my brother saw in a girl like that. Are you kidding? You seem to be getting on very well. Well, one has to make some kind of personal sacrifice, you
Hello. Mr. Pelly? Yeah, this is Pelly. I want you to stop bothering your head about the late Norman Dale. You surprise me. You don't. I will surprise you. Hello, Dad. Where have you been? Visiting. Visiting whom? I'll take it. Hello? It's for you. Yes. Did you recognize the man's voice? No, I didn't. Now listen, can you park your car in that side street opposite Sinclair's flat tomorrow at 10? As I can. I'm going in to have a chat with him. If I'm not out in half an hour, you telephone the police and say the police is being burgled. You're taking a chance, Chris. Not with you outside. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye. Mr. Sinclair's flat number? Uh, number 69, sixth floor. But I don't think he's in, sir. Okay, thanks. Excuse me, sir. What is it? A gentleman was inquiring for your flat number. What about it? I told him you were out, sir, but he went on up. Let's go. You left the book in the flat beats me. You must be crazy. It's gone. You dope. Hello. Hall Porter, please. This is Mr. Sinclair's flat here. Has that fellow you told us about gone yet? He hasn't. Good. Then stop him if he tries to go. Perhaps he's still here. No, of course he isn't. He went out by the same way as he came in, through that window. Now listen, you'd better telephone Otto and tell him what's happened. Otto? He's not... Do as I tell you if you don't want to end up in a marble slab. I'm going downstairs to try and catch the geezer.
give me a toll, will you? Hello, toll. This is Museum 2139. I want Oxley 241. Hello? Hello, Otto. This is Sinclair. Otto, look, something's happened. That blind man's been snooping. The record book, it's... It's gone. But I was going to take it to the office this morning. Hello? Hello? Find him and tell him to come up to 69 right away. It's urgent. Now listen to me. This thing's loaded and I'm not afraid of using it. As far as the police are concerned, you'd just be a burglar that got violent. I want that book you took out of the desk. So you got a license for that gun? Hand it over. Check it on the floor. <laughs> Did you find anything? Yeah, plenty. And now? Post office. I'm going to wire chalk in. Five thousand X Y B fourteen ten forty eight. Ended October nineteen forty eight. X Y B had some sort of code. October. That was the month Norman was killed. Hello. Yeah, Pelly here. That'll be chalky. Oh, sorry, Frank. Yeah. They were. Uh huh. Okay, Frank. Thanks a lot. That's all I want to know. I'll let you know what I find out. Okay. So long. Did you know the custom authorities were waiting for you to land on the day the plane crashed? No. Well, they were. I've just checked with a friend of mine, the Air Ministry. They don't usually do that with service machines unless they suspect smuggling, do they? If Norman escaped from the plane, what happened to him in the months before he was killed? What did you do immediately after the crack-up? Well, Sinclair went to the plane, but he wasn't able to do a thing. He couldn't even get near it. Where were you? Some distance away. I hurt my ankle when I landed. Sinclair phoned the RAF station at Oxley and they sent over an ambulance. 
What makes you think Norman could have escaped? Because we have a very good reason to believe he was alive. Why didn't he show up? That's what we'd like to know. The way I see it, the crash was rigged for Norman's benefit. He'd probably caught on to Sinclair's smuggling racket. Well, if Norman knew that his plane was being used for smuggling, it's a wonder he didn't tell me. He probably thought he could handle it on his own. And that ties up with Sinclair's telephone call. Telephone call? Chris had him phone an Oxley number. This guy, Otter's probably got a hideout down there. It'd be worth having a look at. Anything I can do? Not just yet. I'll collect a jalopy and go down in the morning. Be careful, Chris. Don't worry about me. I've got nine lives. Don't use too many of them. I'll save one for you if you're interested. <laughs> Street address of Oxley 214. Most unusual. I know, but you will, won't you? Well, why don't you ring up and ask them? I want to give them a surprise. Go on, show your independence. Break a rule. Well, it's the Grange. Been empty for years. There's somebody there now, but they're no good. Oh, friends of yours? Uh, acquaintances. What do you mean, they're no good? Well, they get all their rations in London. Don't buy a thing from us. Not even a stamp? Stamps? Well, there's no money in stamps. You want to know how to get there? Yes, please. Well, then, turn right and follow the main road till you get to the Cross Keys. That's a public house. I get it. Go straight on, and on the left, you'll see the Grange. Stands in its own ground. You can't miss it. OK, thanks a lot. It's a pleasure. You like sticking your neck out, don't you, chum? Get moving. Ah, Mr. Penny. You, you do remember me. Yeah, and I remember Sinclair, too. Only he didn't look so good last time I saw him. Mr. Sinclair remembers the occasion very well. Strange world, isn't it, Mr. Pelly? One never knows what is waiting for us round the corner. One never knows. Uh, Mr. Pelly, uh, what do you do for a living? I'm an engineer. Oh, are you now? Very interesting occupation. How would you like to return to it someday? Maybe I will, as soon as I've fixed you up. And not forgetting your two boyfriends, of course. I should be sorry to think that you're a vindictive man, Mr. Pelly. Personally, I, I like to live and let live. If only people would allow me to. Now. Let's be reasonable, huh? 
All right, stop grinning like a benevolent tiger and get to the point. I should like that notebook you stole from Sinclair's flat. Pelly. I imagine blindness must be a very tragic affliction. It has its compensations. Well, just the same, I'm, I'm sure you prefer to keep your eyesight. Uh, now you've got it back again, wouldn't you? Come on, Penny, where's that notebook? Where well, you won't find it, chum. I can assure you, we're quite determined to have that book returned. Mickey here can be most persuasive. I would advise you to tell us where it is. Yeah, and supposing you tell me which one of you killed Norman Dale? You see, Mickey is apt to get a little rough. That won't help. Seems Mickey, our friend, will need persuading. <coughs> 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 Sorry, I can't wave to you, Angel. Get up! All right, Mickey. Going someplace? Hey, you should show a light. Red or green? Are you on my side? Allison, when you go out of here, turn right. You'll find a staircase that'll take you to the back door. It's unlocked. Okay. You may pick up a lift on the road. The lorry's passed here on the way to London. All clear. Thanks, Angel. Call me at my flat tomorrow. I'll be back at 12. You were quick. What happened to you? Seems the boys got anxious about their notebook. Tell me something, is your father still against my making investigations? Yes. You know why? No, I don't, but I'm beginning to agree with him. Chris, what good is it doing? No matter what you discover, it won't bring my brother back. Meanwhile, you're just a target for these thugs yourself. Hey, you've changed your tune, haven't you? No, I haven't, but I've got to think of father. He's had one nervous breakdown already, and if this continues, he might... What? He might go to pieces altogether. I'll have a talk with him. No, don't, please. Why not? Well, I... I had to tell him that I'd asked you to drop the whole thing. Will you? I'm sorry, I've got a score to settle on my own account. All right. Where are you going? Home. Chris, taking the law into your own hands isn't going to get you anywhere. What do you want me to do, go to the police? No, you know I don't want that. Just stay out of trouble. I'll think about it. Chris, everything all right? Not bad. Yeah, the day off today, sir. I thought I'd come and see how you got on. Good. Come on up. They mean business. Yes, yeah, so do I. They must have got in during the night. They'd found I'd gone, and apparently our guests don't appreciate Shakespeare. Nice work. Hello? Hello. Hello, Parker. I thought it would be you. I rang you up to see if you were all right. It was a bit tricky getting away. I thought they suspected, but it was all right. Listen, I must talk to you. Can you come round? 
What's it about? Strictly business. There are one or two things I didn't tell you the other day. But I will tell you now if you're interested. I'll be over in ten minutes. I'll wait for you. Too much of a hurry, Lila. We found these in your room after you left. Yes, there's a note from Miss Dale. Who from? The gentleman asked me to leave it. Oh, thank you. I have some information about your brother. If interested, meet me at the corner of the Haymarket and Panton Street in half an hour of receipt of this. Jenny, when my father comes in, will you tell him I've had to go out? Yes, miss. I'll be back in about an hour. Very well, miss. The key's in the lock. Please? No, they might ask too many questions I can't answer. Let's go. I want to try the window. What up you go. Keep the torch on the floor. Pull the blinds down, Chalky. Right. the hand, Jorgie. Sure. Maybe this one will be lucky. I think this is what we're looking for. The key to the code numbers. We'll soon see. Found out anything? Yeah, Chalky, quite a lot. The pieces are beginning to fit. What do you mean? Take a look for yourself. These boys have been running a pretty smart racket in currency exchange. The code numbers of their foreign agents, the figures, their amounts. Hmm. Well, that pretty well ties up everything, doesn't it? Yeah, pretty well. But we'd better be going, hadn't we? Yeah, right away. Next 
Well, Chris, it all depends on the next two minutes. I should have figured it out before. Travel agency, airport, reception committee at the Grange. It all adds up, doesn't it? What are you talking about? Well, you don't think that I had anything to do with it? We'll soon see. All right, Mickey. After you, Chalky. Huh. Well, why should I go first? I want to see what your playmates have got planned for me. Miss Dale to see me, please. He's upset. Oh, Mr. Dale, then. You wait a moment, sir. Well, Mr. Petty, what do you want this time? That's a nice photograph you have of Patricia. What happened to the one of Norman? Mr. Pelly. Uh-huh. Have you seen my daughter today? Not since this morning. Why, where is she? I don't know. She received a note at 12 o'clock this morning, and went out immediately afterwards. I thought perhaps she'd gone to meet you. She's been out ever since. Look, Mr. Dale, if you have the slightest idea where she is, for heaven's sake, tell me. I don't know what you've got to hide, but Patricia may be in danger. There's nothing to tell you. Nothing. I warn you again, keep out of this. I happen to know something about this gang. Are you being blackmailed? In a way, yes. If it's over money, they can't blackmail you any longer. This is their records book, a black market money transaction. It's in code. And this is a key containing customers and agents. Is your name in here? No. Then you have no objection in handing them over to the police? Or would you rather I did? I'll do it. I'll do it myself. Telephone them now and get them to send a detective right away. Scotland Yard, put me through to the duty inspector, please. Uh, what I think has happened, I've got a good idea. Patricia is. There's a house down at Oxley called The Grange. I know. You think they've taken her there? Yeah, they probably expect me to follow. Hello, this is Mr. Dale, of 3 Lindale Square. Would you please send a detective round to see me immediately? Yes, it's very urgent. I'm going down there. Now, you hang on to these and don't let them out of your sight. Well, what are we going to do? Sit here and wait for this geezer to turn his head? I reckon we ought to split up. If this breaks, it'll be curtains for all of us whether we split up or not. It's Pelly I'm worried about. Everything would have been all right if you and Sinclair hadn't bunked the things tonight. It wasn't our fault. Oh, that blasted generator again. Well, we'll have to fix it. All right. Light the lamp first. Get a move on. Light it. What's happened? The generator has broken down. Mickey is going to fix it. I better go and see if the girl's all right.
Don't move, Otto. Get him up. Come on, I'm not fooling. Now, this is just the way I like it, Otto. You've never been in a blackout before. It's just like this when you're blind. How do you feel about it? <laughs> I can see you quite clearly, Otto. I'll tell you where you are, just to make it more interesting for you. You're right over there by the curtain. That won't do you much good. I could pick you off, Otto, quite easily. But I want you to tell me where Patricia Dale is first. I'll give you five seconds, Otto. Just five seconds. Sinclair. All right, Otto. Supposing we go and see Miss Dale. I'll take you. Okay, get moving. We haven't got much time. I'm afraid she can't leave just now. Norman Dale. Sorry to spoil your little murder hunt. But as you can see, I'm really quite well. How long have you known, Pat? Since this afternoon. Does your father know anything about it? I think so. I'd advise you to hand over that gun, Pat. Pat is naturally anxious to avoid a scandal. Women are so sensitive about family matters. And my colleagues and I are leaving tonight for the continent. So oh, you're running this crowd, Dale. And I suppose it was you who rigged the crash. Yes, the uh, customs were becoming a little too inquisitive. I found it more convenient to disappear. It's a pity we weren't able to meet before, Perry. We could have saved ourselves quite a lot of trouble. But unfortunately, I was abroad. I returned only this morning. It's a little late now, isn't it? What about the body I found at Lindell Square? The customs investigator? I'm afraid that was unavoidable. I don't normally approve of murder. No? Then how about Lila Drew? Lila? We had to do it, Norman. Norman, the police! All right, stay where you are. Window. Down the back.
right, Dale. Throw your gun down. We've got your pals. You can't get away. Try and get me. We've got the two of them, sir. I've called an ambulance for the others. Good. I'll take them along. You stay behind and clear things up. Right, sir. You'd better get that arm fixed. I'll be along in a minute. I'm sorry it had to work out this way, Pat. The ambulance is here, sir. Thanks. Wait for me. 